The week mentioned in this verse is a week of years. As Daniel explains, this is the last week in a 70 week period, the final seven years in a 490 year time span. We read in verse 24, 70 weeks are determined upon the people of Israel and the holy city of Jerusalem to finish transgression, to end sin, to be reconciled with God and to bring an everlasting righteousness. It unveils with pinpoint accuracy what was supposed to take place 2,000 years ago. At the end of the dispensation of Israel, everlasting righteousness, when Christ sits on the throne of David as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. However, due to the rejection of their Messiah, God set Israel aside for a season. After 483 of the 490 years had been completed, and the last week of years, that future seven-year period of great tribulation had to be postponed until the completion of the dispensation of grace, which is the church age. The 70th week in Daniel's prophecy has already been postponed for nearly 2,000 years. This verse is considered to be one of the most illuminating prophecies of Old Testament scripture that relates to the time of Jacob's trouble and the second coming of Christ. It explains that 490 years after a very specific and identifiable point in Israel's history, the Messiah would come and set up his kingdom on earth. Because Israel rejected their Messiah and did not fulfill the covenant they made with the Lord at Mount Sinai, the kingdom was postponed. The time clock paused for Israel and the interlude we call the Church Age began, and for a time, the Lord instituted the church to go into all the world and spread abroad the gospel of grace, that Christ died and is risen as a sacrifice for sin. This interlude will end when the church is removed at the rapture, the time clock will recommence for Israel, and this important seven-year prophecy of the 70th week will start to be fulfilled. The 70th week will begin when the satanically inspired man, who is going to desecrate the temple, makes a peace treaty with Israel. This man of sin will be identified when he confirms a covenant of peace. People will hail him as the Messiah and he will deceive many. Meanwhile, during the 70th week, Israel will complete their call to preach the gospel of the kingdom throughout the world as foretold by Matthew. They will call all men to repent for the kingdom of heaven is coming soon. They will preach this kingdom gospel throughout the world thus completing the postponed final week of Daniel's prophecy, and then the end will come, when Christ will return to sit on the throne of David and set up God's kingdom on earth. Sadly, while a remnant of converted Jews and two special witnesses will tell forth the truth that Jesus is the promised Messiah and eternal Son of the Father, others will believe the lie from the satanically inspired man of sin. They will be shockingly deceived into thinking the Saviour has already arrived, believing his smooth-sounding words, until a significant event takes place in the middle of the final week, or three and a half years into the seven-year period, when this evil imposter completes the abominable action described in this verse. In the middle of the week, he will go into the temple of God and put a stop to the daily sacrifices. This counterfeit Christ will claim that he is God, and he will desecrate God's holy temple with what Jesus calls the abomination that causes desolation. This act will expose the imposter as the Antichrist, and then the full force of God's wrath will be poured out in fullest measure on a God-hating, Christ-rejecting, Jew-despising, Christian-loathing, sinful world. God is righteous and must judge sin but he must also judge the world in righteousness. Our sin was judged at the cross. The wrath of God was poured out on Christ in our stead, which is why the church will be removed before this terrible day of destruction, for we are not appointed unto wrath. However, an unbelieving world must suffer the consequences of rejecting the God who created them and who paid the price for their sin with his own blood. How shocking to realise that so many have refused to accept his salvation by faith. However, a multitude without number will hear the good news of the coming kingdom 
and will be saved during this terrible time of trouble. Many will be slaughtered for their faith, as complete destruction is poured out on the man of sin who desecrated the temple of God. Paul reminds us that, although this wicked one will be revealed, the Lord shall consume him with the spirit of his mouth and destroy him with the brightness of his coming. Today is a day of grace. Today is the day of salvation for all who will believe on Christ for the redemption of their sins. Let us redouble our efforts to tell all those we meet today that Christ died for their sins and rose again to give them life everlasting so that they too may escape this coming day of wrath. Tomorrow may be too late. Heavenly Father, thank you for the amazing prophecy in the book of Daniel and for telling us what is shortly to take place so that we can put our house in order and tell others the truth of the glorious gospel of grace while there is still time. Thank you that we have been saved by grace through faith and have an assurance that we have an inheritance reserved for us in heaven. But Lord, there are many who do not know the glorious truth that Christ died for their sins and rose again to save all who would believe in him for the forgiveness of their sin. Give us an evangelistic heart so that we may proclaim the gospel of grace and warn the unsaved that today is the day of salvation. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all.